the Lord Leicester Hospital in Warwick, a prominent and internationally famous building that has existed for the past 900 years. Civic activity has taken place here in that time, starting from the chapel in 1123. Over the ancient west gate into Warwick, the Chapel of St James the Great was built as a chantry chapel by Roger de Newber, the second of the Norman Earls of Warwick. However, the building fell into disrepair and was rebuilt in 1383 by Thomas Beauchamp, the 12th Earl. It was then gifted by King Richard II to the Guild of St George. The walls and foundations of the chapel were built in 1383. The tower was built in 1450, but in 1860, however, extensive chapel restoration became necessary. This is the Great Hall of the Lord Leicester Hospital. It dates back many years. Uh, it dates back to about 1383, so it's nigh on 650 years old. We've had banquets and weddings in here for nigh on 700 years, non-stop, and we still have a function here today. And nearly every weekend we have a wedding or whatever, a banquet. It's been in constant use for nigh on 700 years. And it's beautiful. It's a great place to have those events. Yeah, it's terrific. When it's all laid out with uh, flowers and uh, tables and table plans, etc., it looks really great. Uh, upstairs in the guild hall, people get married and then they come down here and they have their party here most of the time. I really love these lights. I don't know what you would call that, but what yeah, is that called? In Elizabethan times, they used to like all that and they would hang sort of flowers from that and they would also hang sort of great greenery, etc., at different times of the year. Uh, like Christmas and so on. The Guildmaster Thomas Oaken decided that he needed to act quickly to save the buildings. And so he very quickly drew up documents that transferred the buildings, the chapel, the guild hall, the great hall, the courtyard, and now the master's house as well, where he lived. He transferred all the buildings to the burgesses of Warwick, and now they owned the buildings, and so they could escape um, the buildings being seized by Henry VIII. So from 1571, you've had ex-servicemen living at the Lord Leicester. Could you tell us a bit about them? In 1571, Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, acquired these buildings and set up a hospital for uh, wounded, aged or infirm soldiers and sailors of the Elizabethan era. So Bill, how important is it to you to be part of the Brethren? It's like an extended family. We all look after one another. and. Uh, We've got good comradeship, I love it, okay. and it means so much to me. I mean, look at the place, yeah, it's beautiful. you'd pay a fortune to live in somewhere <laughs> like this. So we're in the Guild Hall now. This is the Guild Hall, it dates back to uh, the Civil War times. It was put here for the Guilds of Warwick, it was three guilds the Guild of St. George, St. George and the Dragon of England. They were joined from St. Mary's Church round the corner by the Guild of the Holy Trinity and the Guild of the Virgin Mary. They were very sort of monastic, priestly people under the care of Rome at that time. They built this area here. Well, Warwick the Kingmaker built it uh, around about the time of the Civil War. If you have a look around, you'll see artifacts here from the brothers uh, over the centuries. Also, they brought all these muskets back from their battles around the world. Also, round here you've got a table, 
The guilds of Warwick used to sit round that table and they ran Warwick and Warwickshire from that table. That table is 650 years old. It looks brand new. <laughs> it's old. And isn't it wonderful? The walls are so thin that people used to listen to marriage breakups and dramas inside the house and they got underneath the eaves and that's where the word eavesdropping came from. So this chair has a particularly royal pedigree, I believe. Yeah, it belonged to uh, King James I of England, who was King James VI of Scotland. Now he was the guy that changed the Bible from Latin to English. Uh, we all call it the King James Bible. He came here and was in the Great Hall in 1617. It was just after the gunpowder plot and the Catholics and Protestants were jumping up and down as usual and he was a bit worried about getting assassinated. It's nothing new today with all the troubles we have. But King James, he used to wear padding all around him so as he would be, he was afraid of being stabbed in the street. So he wore all this padding around him. So because he wore the padding the whole time, even at dinners and so on, they had to make a wide chair for him to sit on. And he would sit on that chair at the banquet the town of Warwick spent 10 years paying for what went on at that banquet. But that's the reason why the chair is so broad, to make him upstanding and look like a king sitting there in all his regalia. These are iconic medieval buildings. How are you going to ensure that they stand into the next century? Almost five years of fundraising, but the hope is by that date, we will have raised the money that we can do what the Victorians did 150 years ago and really do what's needed to conserve and protect this place so that it stands strong and proud into the future.